Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bhartia, and in this special edition of TFR Insights for KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon, today we have with us Karsten Semeshki, CEO and founder of Cloudical. Karsten, first of all, it's nice to have you back on the show. My pleasure, Sapna. Let's talk about Cloudical first, because last time when we met, the company was going through some transformation evolution. So what kind of company are we looking at today? Currently, we are looking at a product company since Cloudical uh, has just recently launched Vanilla Stack, which is a Kubernetes, enterprise Kubernetes stack targeted at data centers and customers who want to roll out their own enterprise open source Kubernetes-based cloud stack. And uh, um, at the time this video is going to be available, we are also looking at a company rolling out its own cloud offering based on Vanilla Stack called Vanilla Cloud. Right. Uh, since the focus of this discussion is about uh, security, and I had some discussion earlier also with the uh, Cloudical, especially in the context of Vanilla Stack, if I ask you that if you look at the cloud native space and compare it with the traditional IT space, Security is not an afterthought here. People are taking security very, very seriously. But if you look at their priorities, where does security fit? Is it like the top priority where they start working on security when they are planning their code? Or they, they plan security when they have deployed their code? Well, unfortunately, quite often, they do the latter, uh, like planning for security when pretty much everything is deployed, but that is too late because specifically in cloud and cloud native environments, you need to plan and factor in security from the very beginning. It is pretty important to understand security as a holistic approach. And that approach is not only targeting things like the software you build, it's also uh, targeting the software you run and your processes. So you need to understand that end to end um, you need to factor that in into pretty much everything. Um, and one cannot overestimate uh, uh, the, the importance of security because um, in cloud native environments, you do not only scale your applications and your infrastructures, you do scale your security issues as well. So that has to be kept in mind. And uh, it is pretty important to us and to our customers and to our partners, um, for example, Polyverse, um, to have that in mind from the very beginning. If you look look at security in Cloud Native World, number one is software bugs. Of course, you cannot get rid of bugs. There will always be bugs when you're writing software. And those bugs at times become security issues. Number two is misconfigurations. Are there any other factors also that lead to security issues? Yes, um, basically two additional factors. The one is the wrong feeling of being secure. Uh, basically, you roll out something and you are just under the impression it is secure because, I don't know, you did it uh, using infrastructure as code approaches. That is not per se security. And the other thing, uh, and I cannot over over, uh, over emphasize that too much, is uh, um, not uh, having security processes set up. You need to have the processes drive security, to ensure security, um, because without that, everything else is just blocks that you place somewhere. Um, it needs to be security from the very beginning to the very end of a project, of an infrastructure rollout, and everything in between. So um, not having that in place is a huge problem, and it will most likely cause you issues. And what are the, some of the security challenges or risks that are there, which are unique to cloud native space uh, as compared to traditional space, because that also means that you have to look at it, the problem differently, you have to build your solutions differently. And it's, so you have to also change your company's culture because it's about technology and people as well. So let's talk about what unique challenges or threats there are for cloud native. Um, with, with truly cloud native softwares and infrastructures, um, you basically have way more points where security issues can arise. So um, you need to have that kind of end-to-end -end mentality that I already mentioned, uh, because um, you don't have like, say, five or 10 servers running. You have like hundreds, if not thousands of services exposed. Um, so the attack surface is way bigger. And if you then think of things like um, zero day exploits, um, they will most likely strike you 
So you have to have that in mind. You have to keep that in mind. Um, and you have to work actively against it by setting up your processes, by doing proper monitoring, by bringing in proper infrastructure, and by trying to lower and reduce the attack surface. So that is basically uh, the most important difference between traditional software and cloud native software and between traditional environments and cloud native environments. Kubernetes, for example, is a very, very great tool. We love it. Um, but in the end, um, it gives you, if not configured properly, if not run properly, if not set up on a secure infrastructure, so many attack vectors that you need to take care of that upfront. If something has happened, it most likely will be too late. Um, and then the traditional vectors still are there, like SQL injection, um, like uh, traditional hacking approaches. All of those things, all of those nice little things are still in place and are still present. So um, the attack surface is way bigger. And uh, basically, the enemy on the other side is acting on the greater scale as well. So. Those things um, are the important things to keep in mind and to consider. Right. And the fact is that we may criticize company like Equifax or whatever. The fact is that companies want security. They like security. They work on security. But as you just mentioned, that you know, if you look at Kubernetes, there are so many knobs to turn. And if you look at the whole cloud native stack, or if you look at CNCF landscape, there are so many components. It's so complicated that even if they want, it's so complicated that they cannot keep up. So, so talk a bit about, let's take example of Vanilla Stack or Cloudicle or Polyverse, how you are making it easier for companies who are looking at security seriously to make it easier for actually also breaking in practice instead of getting intimidated or there are so many things to look after, they just can't keep up. Yeah, so um, let's start with the complexity that you already mentioned. And uh, that is uh, what I feel like a pretty important aspect to be considered. Um, most often, and most likely your software, your cloud stack uh, will not be just one singular product. And even one singular product might be very, very complicated and complex to set up and operate. But if you bring in additional layers, as we do with uh, Vanilla Stack, such as um, an infrastructure as a services layer or a platform as a services layer, um, you basically add even more complexity to the game. So reducing that complexity, making it uh, manageable is a very, very important aspect of limiting attack surfaces. So that's what we did with Vanilla Stack. Um, we basically uh, um, set up a Kubernetes in, a, in an opinionated way um, that is supposed to be secure. So our security officers are actively looking into that. We are working in secure processes um, just to ensure that everything is secure the way it is supposed to be. Um, but then again, that is still not enough. You mentioned uh, Polyverse, for example. Um, a Kubernetes cluster has to run somewhere, um, and that is typically a Linux-based environment. So you also need to address Linux security issues. Although Linux is a very, very secure operating system, none of those operating systems are per se, you know, uh, immune uh, to, towards any kind of attacks. So speaking of, for example, zero days, you need to have something in place that allows you to survive zero day attacks. And that is what, for example, Polyverse is doing with their polymorphing approach to packages. Um, and bringing all of those things together, combining all of those things, in one single package that is easy to use, easy to roll out, and easy to maintain is an active step towards more security. Um, then bring in processes, bring in additional tools uh, for static code analysis, for basically um, um, looking at your Docker images you want to run. Um, and you have a pretty secure environment um, that is then again, um, um, easy to roll out and easy to maintain if you happen to choose the right partners there. So that's what we did. And that's why we are so proud of working closely with Polyverse because we feel like, again, security is something you need to see from end to end. It is not tied to a specific component. 
it's from top to bottom and every, and everything in between. Let's talk about the people part of problem. There's technology problem that you can easily solve, but there's people problem. We have DexSecOps there. <clears throat> we also talk about zero trust. In your own experience working with players, partners, customers, how many companies are really embracing these principles, whether you talk about DevSecOps or whether you talk about zero trust? Well, let me put it that way. I'm a developer by origin, and I have two enemies on this planet. One is the ops guys, and the other is the security guys. Um, and um, that kind of mindset is unfortunately um, very, very uh, uh, widely available, uh, uh, be it with developers, be it with uh, uh, operators, be it, be it with uh, security admins. So the other side is always the enemy. Um, and it is so important to get rid of that kind of thinking, of that kind of mentality, um, because security is not starting when you roll out something or when you operate it. It is starting from the very beginning. So having your security force uh, at your desk, at your table, is something that is very invaluable. Unfortunately, that is a matter of mindset from my perspective. There are so many companies, and I would perhaps even say it's the majority of companies that do not manage to foster that um, mindset of collaboration, of, of um, interaction with each other, um, and of um, critical uh, uh, um, of critical acclaim and response towards each other. Um, and that, again, is a security issue in itself. So answering your question, unfortunately, I'd say half of the company, perhaps even the majority of companies, do not uh, uh, live along those lines. Um, there are so many you know, uh, undeclared wars going on between uh, different departments, different uh, 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 players in the game. Um, but that is a huge security issue. You cannot get rid of that. Um, um, unfortunately, because we are still speaking about people. Um, so uh, there is that kind of men mentality. But what you can do is you can actively work against it, first of all. And secondly, at least try to mitigate that using some software. Again, secure stack, end-to-end uh, um, -end stack, and so on and so forth. Those things then at least give you some level of relief. But the problem is there, and uh, the problem is, from my perspective, actually ever-growing, perhaps not in numbers, but in regards to impact. Um, because mo more and more companies are moving towards cloud, envir cloud environments, and then you basically, again, have that big attack surface, and small mistakes cause huge problems. Karsten, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about security in the cloud native and Kubernetes space. And I look forward to talk to you uh, again, as you mentioned uh, before we started that, you know, a lot of announcements are coming for Cloudical. So I look forward to talk to you again. And once again, thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me.